All right, so what did I do at the end of the last video? I made sure my pixel dimensions were the right size, that this is at least 8 by 10 by 300 pixels. Not the whole thing, some mistakes students make, just my sketch parameters. That's why I brought my guides to my sketch, cropped it, made sure that that image was bigger. I'm doing something closer to 11 by 14 inches by 300 pixels per inch. Then I grew my canvas to 30 by 40 inches, which at 300 pixels per inch is the equivalent of 100 or of 12,000 pixels by 9,000 pixels. It's a lot. And now I'm going to go to my background. That was my gray layer, right? And I'm going to practice free transforming. Remember this? Where I do Option Command T on a Mac, Alt Control T on a PC. I'm going to hold down Option and just grow this. And notice that I just stretch that gray to fill in that background space. This is my desk. Hit return. Now, this is the technique that's new. We're used to selecting and then erasing, right? And to do that, we had to rasterize. This time, we're going to select using the rectangular marquee tool. It's like the crop tool, except it just makes a selection. And we're going to select within our guide. And the way we're going to rasterize our selections is by duplicating them. So we have a selection now, and I'm going to say Command J. And what it does is it makes a copy of what I selected onto a new layer on top. And in Photopea, rather than cropping, that is the only way you can actually get rid of pixel diff information, is to delete it from a layer. So an easy way to do that is to copy your selection onto a new layer. Why does that matter? Well, because now that I know I'm at the right resolution, I am at what you will all be at eventually with your image size, 30 by 40 inches by 300 pixels per inch. The only thing that will vary is that your sketches will be different sizes and shapes within that, but they should always be pretty big. So it should look like a sketch with a really thick frame, but it shouldn't look like a postage stamp on top of a poster. You know, it should look like a thick frame because you want this to be print quality. And it needs to be at least 10 inches. So once you've checked your image size, now I'm ready to bring in my reference images. And my reference images are all right here. And then I actually had a few others. Let's see if I even like them. That I downloaded last class. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Hey, what do I use? I think I'll mark that winter tree as green because dead trees are easier to select around than live trees. But I think I'll leave the rest not as preferred. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my preferred reference images, my green ones, right? Now I've got 13 of them. And I'm going to pick the one that's in the furthest background. So I think the furthest background is this one right here of my green images. Drag and drop it in. It will come in at its native pixel resolution because it's a smart object. You can see it's bigger, it's, it's large enough. And then I can decide for my composition, okay, where do I want this to fit in? Well, it's my background image, so I can have it. I don't need to cut this one out. The only layer you don't need to cut in a collage is the first layer you put down because everything goes on top of it, right? But I might want to change it. I might want to flip it with all my free transform things. So I flip it horizontally. I can hold down shift and I can stretch it. And how do I tell where it should go according to my sketch vision? I'll zoom in. Well, I'm going to do the same trick I did with our emoji. I'm going to make a duplicate of my sketch, Command-J, move that up above, and then take its opacity down pretty low. I'm going to do in the 20s, and then lock it. So this is my onion skin layer. And now that shows me, make this full screen, shows me that I can move my layer to make it fit with the intentions of my sketch. It's all making sense? 
You guys with me? Okay. Now, this is tricky because I like that lighting, but I want this transition in that edge. Actually, no, maybe I don't. Yeah, I'm good with it. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, good. I can still stretch it. I can still resize it. Maybe I'll make it just a little bit smaller. Option, Command, T for free transform. Same things we were practicing with the other projects. Hold down Shift to distort it. Yeah, something like that. Okay, next. What's the next biggest or next uh, furthest back reference I have? This one. Drag and drop it in. That reference is huge. So many pixels. So I immediately can mess with it. Can kind of line it up with the intentions of my sketch. Can try it flipped. Can try stretching it. You know, with free transform. Can try maybe. Yeah, just making it a little bit more extreme like that. Okay, but the problem is with this one. I don't want these hard edges. If I turn off my onion skin sketch, I don't want that, right? The thing I want are the mountains. So I'm going to do what's called a rough cut. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm going to roughly with a lot of overlap, like I might want some of these clouds, like some of these clouds are cool. In fact, I can grab a lot of the clouds, a lot of the sky, but I want to get rid of those hard edges at least on the top. Get rid of these kind of hard edges. So I've made a selection. Now, in order to rasterize it, the only one you don't rasterize yet is the background layer. To rasterize it, I hit Command J. It cuts it out and it rasterizes it at the same time. Once we have these rough cut and placed, then we can blend them into each other, fix their colors, do all kinds of things. You can see how just with playing with transparency, they're starting to blend into each other. It's not all that hard to do if the lighting and the coloring matches. But for now, I just need to do the rough compositing, right? And why do I have all this extra space? Well, because I have a lot of layers to fit in. Come on, do this for me. Okay, so the next layer, I'll zoom in on the tools a little bit. The next layer is going to be my trees, right? So first there is, let's do the winter tree. I like how it's a fully contained shape. So I bring it in, it's huge. I immediately shrink it down because I don't need it any bigger than it's gonna look in my image. And let's see, maybe I want this tree to be flipped. If I look at my sketch, this is the top of my sketched tree. Actually, this might be the little one that's on top of the hill. So I'm going to make this pretty small. Like this tree in the far distance on top of this hill. But if I get rid of my sketch, right, which shows the tree, I'm going to rough cut it out with lots of overlap to get rid of those hard edges, or those straight edges, I should say. They're hard edges because I'm, I'm using a lasso and just cutting it out. And then Command J. And then I can just delete the smart object. If I never need it, I have it in my references. Okay, what's next? My big tree. Let's go with the roots. Now I can just push these all off to the side and kind of figure out what I have. But this is like my, my hilltop with my crazy tree. And I can have my onion skin sketch showing. 
And then I can distort this a little bit. So Option Command T. Interesting. Didn't think I had to. I shouldn't need to to free transform it to rasterize it first. Because I don't want to rasterize it first. And it's not rasterized yet. But I'm going to use distort because this is organic. And I'm going to make this a little bit more twisty. A little bit more interesting. And already my landscape's getting a little bit taller than I thought it would. And that's okay. And then I can even try warping it and bending this tree in some ways to be a little bit more unusual. Well, I did use the lasso and cut it out first before I placed it on top. I just used a lot of overlap, right? So, how can I put it? This is like tearing images out of a magazine instead of finally cutting them with an X-Acto knife. These are rough cuts. Yeah, and you want extra overlap because you don't accidentally want to cut out something you'll later need. Later, once we fix the colors and the lighting, then we'll do fine, refined cutouts. And then we'll layer it all. So there's a lot of white pixels that I'm going to be deleting so that the sky comes through behind it. But I don't do that first. I just roughly cut around it first and place it. Because this will show me if I need other things I don't have yet, if there are big gaps that need to be filled. Same thing with the tree. I want almost all of it. But you see how I just kind of wiggled through <laughs> the edges just so they're not horizontal and vertical? And it gives me a hint. I mean, eventually, I'll, I'll give you a, a quick little preview here. I don't use the lasso for refined cutouts. Eventually, what I'll do, like on this tree, is use my magic wand with contiguous turned on with a fairly high tolerance and choose that blue that's in that tree layer and expand it and then delete it, right? Just like we've done before, selecting white around black line art. Right. But this is selecting just these flat blues. Now, because this photo is pretty clear and I'm not losing any of the tree that I don't want, that's, that's imitating what the refined cutout's going to be. How are you changing from motions to motions? Uh, by holding down shift, you can add to a selection. Yeah, so I've got, got these layers stacked up. What goes in front of this tree? Well, I have my other tree. Because I had this idea of kind of combining them in some way. God, that reference is huge. Such, these were the second largest. So Pixabay, really nice for some of these landscape things. So what I'm going to do is blend this kind of funky part of the tree, especially to cover some of this middle ground with the, the other tree that's already there, right? So how do I cut it out? Well, I just want a lot of this, just kind of funky. I don't want the ground, but I want a lot of this wood and just a rough tearing right now. And it'll be interesting to try to make that all work. But I like a challenge. Okay, and then I can get rid of the smart object underneath. And organic things are easy to blend. Like I said, I can just play with opacity. And you can start to see how that's going to come together into, you know, one really funky original tree that's not relying on any one reference image. Especially once I kind of move it and warp it. Option Command T, free transform, warp. I love organic shapes. They are fun to use. They are so much more forgiving than man-made things.